सहनावतु सहना भुनाक्तु सहवीरवाहाय तेजस्वी नीतमस्तु मा विद्विषावहाय शांति 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 नमस्ते And now let's continue with Katha Upanishad. So Katha Upanishad, as its Sandhi form is sounded, is actually something beyond all material calculation. It can't be understood. It is revealed knowledge. In other words, it talks about the spiritual existence. it talks about our relationship with god it talks about death and what is after death and finally it talks about the human spirit and the actual origins and nature of consciousness and experience and this is very high stuff so as an entry point a launch pad uh, a place to start it begins with this scene in a vedic sacrifice where the performer of the sacrifice wants to give away all his possessions and take sanyas to attain a higher birth in the next life but because there's a problem with the performance of the sacrifice his son has to offer himself as an offering as a gift that he should give away to the brahmanas or to whoever so the father being a bit irritated says i give you unto death anupashya yatha purve pratipashya tatha pare sasya miva martya pachyate sasya miva jayate punah consider successively how your fathers behaved and consider how others behave now man decays and dies like corn and emerges again like corn now this verse has to be taken with the first line of the previous verse for this to all make sense so i'll read that again too bahuna me mi pratamo bahuna me mi mayadyamaha kings vidyang yasya kartavyam yan mayadya karishyati Among many I rank as belonging to the highest among many I rank as belonging to the middling what purpose of death can there be that my father will get achieved today through me now there's two ways to interpret these verses one is that nachiketa is talking to himself trying to understand the situation and how he should behave how he should take everything and the other interpretation is that he's talking to his father trying to explain why he came up with this whole idea of being given away as part of the sacrifice and trying to understand well why did my father curse me like this he's saying i i was one of the top of my class I was certainly at least you could say I was among the middling and of course what's omitted is significant I was not among the lowest among spiritual aspirants there are three classes kanishta adhikari which is the lowest beginner class madhyam adhikari which are those who are well situated on the path and uttam adhikari those who have realized So he says in many respects I am of I am of the highest class and in many respects I am of the middle class the madhyam but in no way am I of the lowest class see he's giving an honest assessment of himself that in some areas of spiritual life I have realization that's enough right there that puts him amongst the top 
of the human species. Because anyone who has any kind of degree of spiritual realization is beyond, you know, the overwhelming majority of people. So he's saying, I'm actually a pretty good kid, you know? <laughs> Why did my father want me to die? So then maybe he goes to his father and, and makes the same argument. Like, you know, I'm a, a good son. I've, I've given you a lot to be thankful for. Now, why do you want to throw me away like this just because of an offhand remark? I think death has some purpose that he wants to achieve through this pastime, through this episode. I don't think it's a simple matter. I think there's something inscrutable going on here, something beyond material existence, something transcendental. And that is very befitting. Because kata, with death, everything is inscrutable. Death can come at any moment. We never know when. He can come suddenly or slowly, step by step. Which is better? I don't know. <laughs> but people have various opinions on the matter. I don't. Because I know the truth. It's up to him. However, he thinks is the best for us is the way that he will approach us. So then Nachiketa says, consider how your forefathers behaved. He's talking to his father now for sure. Look at your father and your father's father and all back to earlier times. They all protected their words of honor. Maybe his father is having second thoughts. Oh, I, I shouldn't really make this poor boy die. Huh? But then his own son says, now wait a minute, consider our forefathers and how they behaved, and consider other sages and how they behaved and how they were ready to sacrifice anything to preserve their word of honor. Of course, today we don't consider these things very important, certainly not worth dying for. Huh? But some people, especially warriors, have a special relationship with the word of honor. Once you give your word, you're committed, and that's it. For example, in, in combat, soldiers are told, you have to do this. And they have already given their word of honor. They have already promised to follow their orders. So it's like, yes, sir. And they go off and do it. Knowing that other people are counting on them, betting their lives, literally, on that they will keep their word. So I'm not sure where it's said. Maybe it's in the Bible that a man is only as good as his word. And surely in life we find this to be true. Huh? Who are the good men? Who are the people that we can count on? Who are responsible? Who are doing good to others and so on? They're the people who honor their word. And not just what other people think, but what they themselves have committed to have promised in their heart of hearts. So actually, each and every one of us is true to our own nature. But those who value their word are explicit about it. They take a stand. They give their word to others. I will do this. I will be like that. I will deal like that. Like many, many times we've given our word on this channel, that we're never going to monetize this content. This is never going to become a sold-out, paid-for uh, part of a course or something like that. I mean, maybe if I pass my work on to some others and they decide to monetize it, but that's up to them. That's their issue. My issue or my stand is that it should be free. And this was always the case 
you know, talk about following the predecessors and their ways. Our predecessors, like my guru, my Adi guru, Srila Prabhupada, not only did he make all of his teachings free, but he actually supported his close disciples and gave them free run of all his temples all over the world. Certainly he did with me. And I experienced great spiritual advancement because of having this facility. And that, of course, led to getting first path in 1984 and so on and so many other things. He even trained me in the skills necessary to make a living in the world as part of my devotional service. So, see, having a relationship with a real guru, a real sadhu, a person with integrity, a person who keeps their word, can have many, many benefits in the future that you, you can't even foresee. You know, I never foresaw when I was learning to edit Sanskrit as part of Prabhupada's publishing efforts, I never saw how that was going to benefit me in the future. I never thought, you know, it would lead to a 25 to 30 year career as a writer. I never imagined that it would lead to me having a retirement fund that I could just live free and not have to worry about anything and perfect my spiritual life. I could never have foreseen that at the time. Yet, that's how things worked out, as if under superior guidance. So, of course, you know, we could go back and analyze my birth chart and so many things. But the point is that we all depend on the people who keep their word. If they didn't, the whole world would devolve into chaos. And isn't that what's happening in Kali Yuga? Huh? People are giving false promises. Everything is marketing now. Everything is politics. People say whatever they want. We have now alternative facts, <laughs> which is just another name for lies. Or... Everything has spin on it. Everything has some interpretation according to one's political views or religious views or whatever. The point is, it's very hard to find plain, straight-up, unvarnished truth. See, this is why I base all my major series on the scriptures, the Shastras. The Shastras are God's word to human beings. Like, this is the deal. This is my offer. I will protect you if you serve me. You take care of me, I'll take care of you. It sounds like some New Jersey mafiosi. You know, you take care of me, I'll take care of you. A quid pro quo. Actually, spiritual life is beyond that. Uh, that's only a very surface view, but that's what we need in the beginning. We need the assurance that God will take care of us if we give up everything and serve him alone. You know, is he going to betray us? Because we have so many experiences with people betraying our trust. Well, that's people, and that's Kali Yuga. But that is not the behavior of a civilized being. A cultured being is always ready to stand by his word. This is the sine qua non. This is the quality of a spiritually advanced person. You can trust them to do what they say. That's why here, I don't claim to be a guru. I don't claim to be, you know, have any special powers or anything. If I claim anything, it's that I keep my word. For example, when people came to me as a teacher, you know, a decade or 15 years ago, they all gave me a deposit of several thousand dollars. And I invested that money and we funded the whole thing from the proceeds of those investments. And my promise to them was, when you leave, we give you your money back. 
And that's exactly what we did. And, you know, there's many people, many detractors and enemies who are trying to destroy my reputation by saying this and that and the other thing. But the one thing they never accuse me of is lying. Because they can't. The evidence is there. Everybody who was involved knows the truth. So that's the kind of person you want to learn spiritual life from. Doesn't matter whether they have any big title or designation uh, or any fancy name or anything. It's just, are they going to keep their word? Are they going to be honest with me? Are they going to tell me the straight up truth about the spiritual life? Are they going to guide me without any ulterior motives? This is the quality of a real spiritual teacher. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Namah Shivaya.